Hello people, we are here and we are here with uh, Star Ladder. It is the LAN finals that we are going to be watching and we have got a bit of a... Well, we've worked hard to provide you with extra coverage so you can at least, you know, feel not too bad that you're not at Star Ladder because you get better star uh, coverage here than you get at Star Ladder or at least, you know, maybe a bit of the idea. Anyways, we will have for you a panel that will discuss the matches that are upcoming and before we're gonna do that I'm just gonna show you the brackets for a second there as I go to this screen and you can see of course you saw this screen a moment ago as well where you saw that this is indeed Star Ladder and this is of course IC Cup and Virtus Pro that's gonna be our first best of three matchup these two teams will be going to the loser bracket or winners bracket that's gonna be the deciding factor of today it goes for all teams by the way so IC Cup vs Pro and after that later on in the evening is going to be Alliance vs Quantic and of course as said a uh, bit of a pre-show for you as we have got a couple of people here that will help doing that and I'll first give them volume before switching to the right overlay because volume is nice because <laughs> you could hear my talk but nobody could hear you talk and there they are! We've got Vikermont who will be taking on the lead for the discussion, we'll also have Kanaz who will be giving you extra insights about the game and of course that's my K-Poptosis who I have yeah I'm sorry I should put your oh. camera different again but <laughs> other than that <laughs> they're all here. Basekip is gonna I'll be here a little myself. bit as well but Basekip right now is um, is not here he is still casting so he's still quite busy but when he is back we will have him too and we'll be able to give you extra coverage and uh, I'll say you know to take it away Vikamond Alright, well, uh, Star Ladder Season 6, the finals starting today, will be going through July 4th, 5th, 6th, and 7th, four days of action, basically uh, one to two series each day, and we'll move forward to determine, you know, who's going to be the champion of Season 6, I know I'm excited. Why don't we go ahead, I guess, and introduce the panel. Uh, Kanaz, you want to introduce yourself? Sure, uh, name's Tom, I go by <laughs> Kanaz, uh, I'm an amateur caster, and I don't know. See me casting with Shiver many times in the past. All right, K-pop. Uh, hey guys, um, I'm Brian, known as K-pop Tosis. Uh, I've been uh, doing stats for Shiver and uh, fiddling around with Beyond the Summit as well, doing stats for the last couple of weeks. Uh, first time on camera, doing some analysis of games. I'm really excited about it. Should be a great slate of games coming up today. Yeah, I definitely think so. Uh, Shiva, are you going to join the panel for this one? Since we don't have uh, yes. base skip, you want to share your thoughts? I will share my thoughts. Wanna... I will introduce All myself. Right. Yeah. I am Shiva. <laughs> I'm a caster. <laughs> <laughs> I have and this very is a high... Hello, yes. Hello Shiva. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. It's it's, it, it, is, it is an addict, to be fair. Addiction. But... <laughs> so, Frank Roman, can you introduce yourself as well? Yeah, of course. And then uh, I'm Vikramond. I've been casting, uh, I guess, about a few months now. Uh, definitely on Shiver and as well as a few other streams. So I've been getting my name out there a little bit. And uh, yeah, we casted quite a bit of Starlighter Season 6 together uh, here on Shiver Gaming. And we're, I think we're all excited to get up into the, the playoffs, see these four of the best teams, perhaps not the four top performing teams, which we'll get into a little bit later, but uh, four of the top performing teams sort of duking it out. And I guess, yeah, let's uh, let's talk about the season first. So, uh, Kanaz, any wrap-up thoughts about the Starlighter Season 6 before we move on to the playoffs? Well, it was definitely an interesting season, to say the least. Uh, we had some scandals going on we did. with the uh, <laughs> whole 322 bet. Yeah. Um, so that kind of got Rock's kids in trouble. That's why they're not here, even though mm -hmm. they would have been fighting for one of those positions. Right. And uh, a lot of teams also busy with the upcoming international boot camping, moving around all over the place. And as a result, these are the teams we're going to end up with. Still very powerful teams. A lot of them have played very well. And, uh, yeah, I think that's yeah. pretty much everything that happened. <laughs> K-pop, any thoughts on the season? Um, the season was very interesting for me for a couple of reasons. One was how dominant Virtus Pro was throughout it. Um, because yeah. Virtus Pro finished first, only losing one game in a field that included Alliance, Na'Vi, Mouse Sports... So they did. They performed really well, and I was also surprised with some, how how badly actually some of the more um, known teams performed. I know we had Empire, who had a lot of issues with roster sure. changes and whatnot, but I was still also very surprised to see how badly they actually performed during the season. And so it was an interesting. It was a very interesting series. But I think um, these finals have a really good slate of teams with them as well. Definitely. 
All right, so K-pop then. You talked about how, how well Virtus Pro performed in the season. Let me kick this next one to you. Uh, okay. So I what I have is Alliance, obviously, is in some respect the favorites. So uh, do you think they're the favorites by a lot, by a little? Do you actually think that VP is the favorite simply because of their seasonal performance? What do you think? I think Virtus Pro is in a state of constantly being underrated. Um, I don't know why that is, really, because they always perform well. They might not have been like quite up to snuff recently. They've had a little bit of a transition time since they've added Arsart um, to where they've kind of trying to get back to the place they were before that. Uh, but they feel like they're really hitting a rhythm now uh, with him. Um, but I think it's hard for... I, th I think if any team in the world played up against Alliance right now, they would still be the underdog. Um, just because sure. of how well-known Alliance is. So Alliance, I would still say, is still my favorite just because of how fantastic they've played. Um, even in the last month, they've handled the patch changes better than just about anybody. Um, so I'd say they're definitely still the favorite, but don't count out Virtus Pro. They always, sure. they always are willing. They can always play great games. They can take anybody to three matches. Yeah. Shiver, what about you? Alliance, the, the prohibitive favorites or just the regular favorites? I think the regular favorites. I think a lot of people are underestimating IC Cup. We've seen them beat Verse Pro last Saturday, so that was... I mean, their record at that point was already 4-1. to one. So they've won four times from Verge Pro and Verge Pro only winning one of them. And I think they're yeah. the underdogs, but I definitely think they have a chance. I like Quantic. I think they're a little less strong since people have taken more time to look at what they're actually doing and actually countering what they're doing, as well as, mm. of course, with the nerfs that have happened to today. Mm. And yeah. I think Alliance is still the favorite, but not as strong as some people might think. Yeah. Like, yeah. You mentioned Quantic, and that's really interesting, of course, because Quantic, uh, Sakshka, one of their players who's been playing uh, sort of a rotating role, but usually on a ganker, maybe off lane, or a tri lane carry in the hard lane, all sorts of different positions. He will not be at the tournament. We talked about this a little bit, of course. He had a, uh, a wrist injury or an arm injury, I think. Right. So yeah. they've got uh, Black from Mao's standing in, so Mao's <laughs> yeah. carry player, which is cool. He's, a, he's an absolute star player, but it'll definitely change the dynamics. So uh, connect what do you make of the whole black standing and thing? How is it going to change how Quantic are going to play? Does it hurt their chances? Does it help them? Uh, I'm really not sure how it's going to end up working out. I think one of the big things is how different black often plays from Sashka in a game. Uh, Quantic, with their carries, it, he usually doesn't end up farming maybe as much as black typically does in his role with mm -hmm. mouse sports. So uh, I'm a little bit curious to see if it's going to be Quantic trying to adjust their draft strategy a little bit, or if they're going to get Black to adjust their play. Either way, though, I think these players are good enough that they're going to be able to adapt to the, the different player, whether it's going to be just Black maybe taking a more aggressive role in the play, which he has done in the past from time to time and always uh -huh. has been pretty successful, or if it's just going to be Go Black changing up his draft a little bit, going with something maybe a little more late game oriented, less five manning, like carry less track. <laughs> <laughs> right, and uh, so Shiver, I know you've casted Black a lot. I think you were actually casting him back when he didn't have a regular team, and he, he was, was just standing in for every single European Tier One and Tier Two team. So, do you think there will be that adaptability, or will there be a little bit of friction in the Quantic lineup? Well, I, to be fair, like I was re relatively new in the Dota scene when I started casting matches, uh, also with Black in it but when he was a stand-in, and he didn't always yeah. play carries like the one game that really stuck with me when I, I i don't know if i watched the game or if i, if I casted it but i was really impressed by his sand king he was playing a oh. sand king while being a stand-in for navi and his burrow strikes constantly mm -hmm. like backing out of the fight and then coming back in getting a double or triple burrow strike and then backing out again and coming in again and i mean that was like i didn't know he was the farmer black and i think that he can definitely <laughs> right. adapt but i think i do think like if he is in that carry role I mean, he is a farmer, and I, I yeah. heard it said. Heard yeah. it's, I think LD said it. Like, there's a difference between being someone that can farm really well and being a carry, and I think that's still a balance that, for example, for be for a Quantic, he has to work out because I think Silent was a lot more active early on in the game than uh, Black he normally is. is. So, very much so. Do you think they'll run black in the in the one role, Shiva? Do you, do you actually know? Have they revealed I, I this? I have. Uh, I have talked to Shiva. I will actually just scroll down and read exactly what he says. So, okay. 
Uh, I've asked. I've asked if um, Black will play as a carry, or and if Silent then will take on the off lane. And he said, most certainly we will adapt with Black in a function of hero. Okay, that's a bit random. Uh, but uh, if we play Wisp, for example, Silent will play the Wisp, and Mad will be okay. playing the off lane. But most of the strategies will be around Black as a carry. Okay. So they will primarily be using him in that one role. Uh, right. So I guess, uh, K-pop, how do you think Quantic's playstyle adapts to Black as a one specifically? Will they ask him to play differently? Or is Goblet going to draft around you know, what Black is good at? I uh, See, this is something I'm really excited to see how it works out. Because Quantic, actually, of all the teams in this tournament, they finish games faster than anybody. Uh, mm -hmm. and I think that partially is due in part to Silent not being terribly experienced as a one-role carry. Uh, He's played support in the past, played a little bit of offlane in the past, I think, as well. Um, but it's not that he's a, a bad carry. He's just not as experienced as a lot. And so I think Quantic typically tries to finish games early. Sure. Now, Black, obviously, is a force late game. Um, so what I expect them to do a lot is kind of merge the two styles a little bit. I expect to see them running an aggressive tri lane most of the time and giving Black a solo safe lane farmer. So they can still be aggressive early, still play the style of Dota they like to play, but have black available should the mid-game mid not go as well as they expect it to. Sure. Kanaz, what do you think about that? Do you think that, that's, that the aggressive trialing is going to work well for them? Especially, uh, so their first round matchup is Alliance. Do you think it'll be good to sort of <laughs> put that try up in, up in Lotus face and then have black as the backup? I'm never certain if I like the aggressive trialing going up against Alliance. Sometimes they'll run the aggressive trialing and then you don't really have the choice. But a lot of times, if they see if Alliance sees you committing to that aggressive tri lane early on, they'll start moving towards giving S4, giving Admiral Bulldog those really carry heroes, and just sort of mm -hmm. saying, all right, if you want to shut down Lotus yeah. Farm, go for it. We'll have S4 and Bulldog just push plow through anyways. So uh, I think they could definitely run the aggressive tri lane. Quantic, obviously, very skilled in aggressive tri lanes. They run all sorts of really fun, aggressive lineups, but... Uh, yeah. I think they're going to be prepared for this matchup. They've taken games off Alliance in the past, recent past, and uh, I'm just hoping for a good game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm definitely hoping that Quantic is able to adapt well and, and use Black effectively. So moving on to IC Cup a bit. So we've talked on this stream in previous parts of Star Ladder about IC Cup being sort of the CIS slayers, like they do very well sometimes against other sort of Russian-Ukrainian CIS region teams. Shiver, do you think that that's going to help them in this event? Like, do you think that that's a big part of why they're an underdog and they could be, could go far? Yes, and especially since they are up against Verge Pro as the first team that they are going to be playing. So, I think if they can win, at least I, I think they should win this matchup. Like, if they don't win this matchup, they're probably going to have a tougher time because, I mean, Alliance Quantic IC Cup is going to have troubles with those teams. They are a CIS Slayer team. They have. A lot of experience with Verge Pro, with their players, with their playstyle, sure. they can deal with that a lot better than what Quantic can throw at them because those, or Quantic and Alliance rather, because those two teams are just a lot more unpredictable. Though recently you might say that Quantic maybe is a little bit more predictable because they used to be so unpredictable, people started to work out more <laughs> why, what they were actually doing. So, sure. You can think about that. Predictably unpredictable. Bit. Yeah. So, I think IC Cup, they. I think they should be winning from Verge Pro at least this match. Okay. Like my my guess would be that they win from this match and then they'll be up against a team oh, wow. in the winners bracket and that they will be dropped down to lose a bracket and will face Verge Pro <laughs> again. I don't think they will take the whole I I don't think they will take the title, but I definitely think they sure. don't have to end last. Sure. Sure. Uh, K-pop, what's your take on it? Do you think, is the, first of all, is the reputation deserved? Have you looked at the stats for whether or not they slay the CIS after I, that? I haven't looked at that specifically, no, so I don't know exactly how they do against specifically CIS teams. Um, I just remember some matches that I helped do uh, work with in um, Star Series where they played well. Um, mm -hmm. And I think they, they work well against the CIS strategy because the CIS teams tend to be the most aggressive. Um, when you look at teams that are at the top of kills per game, you have Navi at the top, Virtus Pro is close to the top in terms of kills per game. They're always very aggressive teams. You don't really see a whole lot of CIS teams that want to sit on their laurels and then end the game <laughs> at 45 minutes with yeah. a 6 spotted anti-mage. Uh, so I think they do a very good job of responding to aggression. I think Resolution is one of the better 
counter ganking mids in the game, which is kind of weird because he doesn't seem to be terribly active at ganking when he's mid, mm-hmm. because but he responds to ganking very well. He's always quick to TP to a tower when the team's diving and getting a couple kills off their overextension. I think that's what they do well, and so they could perform well if they're good at that against Furnace Pro. They could take a, they could take the match from them. Yeah, I, I'm glad you brought up Resolution, actually, because VP is a very ganking team. They like to rotate NS and R start around, depending on what heroes they're on, but most of the time, if NS is on, you know, your Disruptors of the World and R starts on something like Lashrac or what have you, right. they want to be moving those guys around trying mm-hmm. to get ganks, and I think you rightly highlighted Resolution is incredibly good at punishing that. I'm actually more and more impressed with this player lately. Uh, the more we sort of see him, I think the more he's sort of blossoming as a mid. Uh, I know I saw him... Uh, even months ago, and I, I wasn't terrifically impressed relative to some of the other mids available in the European scene, which, you know, there's a lot of really, really strong mid players. But the other day, I can't remember the tournament, I think it must have been either EMS or Corsair Cup. I think it was Corsair Cup, and it was you and me, Shiver, and he was just crushing. He was, like, 15-4 and four on Batrider or Queen of Pain, and, like, 10-0 and 0 on the other one. It was completely crazy. Mm-hmm. So if he's able to really punish VP... I think I see Cup can take the series, at least in the first set, but it's going to be difficult. So, any other keys to this first round matchup? So, what does I see Cup need to do, maybe other than uh, just resolution playing well to actually beat VP? What does VP need to do to close it out and avoid what could be, you know, a costly embarrassment to have in the first round of the playoffs? Kanaz? I think one of VP's strongest suits is their rotations with their supports. Uh, Arsart in particular usually plays a little bit more of a farming sort of support role as his four. Typically ends up with a lot more money early on than maybe some other teams. And as a result, he's playing typically these aggressive heroes, like maybe a Nyx Assassin support, and is able to create pressure in the other lanes that really helps with making sure that his team can take advantage in that mid, in that off lane, if their carry is already doing well, which a lot of times we'll see sort of not really contesting the farm of the safe lane. And uh, I think that's one of the strongest points for VP right now is that they have really good rotation with their supports. They're able to get those ganks off in the mid, in the off lane, early on in the game. You're going to just pull, create that advantage early, continue it on to the late game. Yeah. Shiver, uh, what, what, what does IC Cup need to do? What does VP need to do? Since apparently you think IC Cup's the favorite, so think, what is, yeah. well, <laughs> how should VP do that? I think VP should probably copy a different team like VP has their own play style they 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 like they have like a CAS play style and I think yeah. up they know that they like these players of both teams they know each other they've played together when they were younger than when how young they are now they like they <laughs> <laughs> they know each other through and through and the way they play and the way they draft I think for example if Virtus Pro would to try out a lineup that for example would be typical for Alliance or Quantic they have a lot better chance than they would have rather than sticking to their own guns. And I see Cup, well, they, they have to just, you know, draft smart. I think a lot is going to be in that and also just starting the aggression. As you said, starting the aggression early and make sure that the key heroes, the key players for Virtus Pro don't get anything done in the early game yeah. and then just roll them over if possible, of course. Uh, yeah, I agree. What about um, key heroes for the matchup? K-pop, what are the, what are the key heroes that we might see as first picks, first bans, uh, for particularly the IC Cup versus Pro matchup? Um, I, see, for them, Veritas Pro, I feel like more than a lot of teams, kind of has this smaller group of heroes that they really choose from. They don't tend... They, they've picked a fair amount of heroes since the patch, but when it comes to Illidan, recently he's been playing Naga Siren, he's been playing Gyrocopter, he's been playing Lifestealer, and he doesn't really deviate from that very much. So I think it's important if they can kind of make Illidan play with someone he's not comfortable with, maybe. Mm-hmm. I think that would be very important um, for IC Cup. I think the whole thing IC Cup need to do with this best of three is just to make Virtus Pro uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. I think whether it's punishing over extensions to denying their key heroes, to putting a lot of pressure on their lanes... It's just going to be about IC Cup being annoying this whole match, really, I think. <laughs> so if they, can, if they can ban out those big Illidan heroes that he's been yeah. very good at. Um, Naga, and I think, first ban? Naga first ban? Naga for, I don't know about Naga first ban. Uh, because you can do a couple of things that work against her. Um, we could see the BKB Enigma like was the big Naga sure. counter in TIT. Uh, but uh, we'll see. I think, I think if they deny some Illidan heroes, though, they'll, they'll do pretty well. Do you, th- do you guys think that uh, IC Cup is going to just try to force... We- in the spirit of sort of being annoying, 
Are they going to try to force Weaver for Jackal again? I know he's been playing it a ton. Mm. Would, is Do you think it's worthwhile for IC Cup to really lean on sort of one strategy, maybe built around Weaver, or should they try to just go with different pocket picks every time, Kness? Um I think that if they are really confident with that strategy and that they can get all the key pieces to the strategy, you know, go with what works. But at the same time, VP, they probably have seen IC Cup. Again, also they played against them recently and ended up dropping that match to that Weaver combo. So they've probably prepared something. They know this was coming up. They've thought about it. They looked over the replay of that match, I'm sure. And uh, I don't know. If they really want to go that route, they can try it again. But I'm not really expecting to even see the tree make it through for the uh, Weaver tree combo. I think there's a pretty good chance tree just gets banned out in the first ban phase. Even with the Even nerf? With the nerf? Yeah. Even with the nerf? Um, yeah, I think so. <laughs> I, I don't know. Like, the nerf... It's, it's not that it happened, much. but... Well, we've got a little time. Let's talk about the nerf. Uh, do, you, do you Tree and Protector, is he going to be the bugbear of Star Ladder, or do you think the nerf is just going to take him out entirely? I guess, Kanaz, you have an opinion, so why don't you go ahead? Yeah, so, I mean, they lowered the instances at low level. Obviously, it's a pretty big deal. It makes it far less powerful, I think, as a support hero. You really need the levels for the Living Order to come into play. Uh, obviously, I guess for people who don't know, mm. they change it from seven instances at all levels to four, five, six, seven with level. Um, and that's a big deal, but the regen it still provides is very powerful for just your mid lane, mm -hmm. for your off lane if you're helping them out. You're not mm. always using it just for the damage mitigation, you're also using it for like free HP regen from across the map that doesn't even cost you really any mana. Uh, so maybe it's a little bit weaker with this particular combo with the Weaver, since Weaver was usually using it very aggressively, diving towers and the like. Yeah. But in a general sense, I think it's still very powerful, and teams are still likely to be picking up Tree. At okay. least for a while, maybe it ends up that it isn't that good, and they stop it. Sort sure. of like the Bounty Hunter nerf that happened also long yeah. ago when they took armor reduction off. Uh -huh. Teams still tried it for a while, and they are like, oh, this is actually a really big deal, so they gave it yeah. up right away. Yeah. Shiver, what do you think? And I guess also uh, another question: Would you be happy if there was less Triant, or do you do you want to see Triant continue to be good? Like I actually, I don't mind Triant that much. And the reason that I would like Triant is because he allows people to dive, which makes you know people more aggressive. And if it's one thing that casters like, it's more aggression in games. On the other hand, this nerf particularly, it reduces the instances of damage it can take, so it reduces the amount of hits you can take, you can't dive as far past tier 2 towers, for example. So I wonder how much effect it will have on that regard, and if it now will mostly be used as that turtle strategy triant is annoying, you can't kill anybody and they're also not going to come after you. So is this nerf actually going to be a fun one? I don't know. I don't. I don't really like. I I know that it had to be nerfed. I mean, there's yeah. no doubt about that. But I think this might be the wrong one, because the like right. it's it kind of um, advertises more safety in lanes, even with mm. the tree. While I would have liked to see, like, if you are with the tree in your lineup, go for more dives, make dives more, you know, mm. rewarding. I don't know, something like that. Sure, sure. All right, well, uh, I guess let, let, let's put the pedal to the metal. If favorites, who wins? Who? What is the matchup for the grand finals, and who wins it, and what's the score? Uh, we'll go everybody this time. K-pop? Um, what I I would like to see, I, I th what I think I will see is I definitely think Alliance will be there. Um, hmm. They're playing, they're performing too well. Uh, since the patch, they've won like 75% of their games. Uh, I saw this the other day. Um, Alliance has a 56% win rate in tournaments. So they win more than 50% of the tournaments they enter. Not wow. just like games, they win the tournaments. So <laughs> they've, they've been absolutely ridiculous as of late. Um, I don't think anyone can really slow them down. I, could, what I, I wouldn't be surprised even, because Quantic seems to kind of have Alliance's number. Uh, maybe them take a game or two off them, maybe some of the loser's bracket, but Alliance is going to fight through and end up in the finals, I think, regardless. Um, and I would. My heart says Quantic is the other team. Just I, okay. I really want to see the new synergy with Black work out. And I think their style can handle it. And it'd be really exciting to see Quantic plus Black versus Alliance yeah. in the finals. So Quantic and Alliance, and and who wins, and by how much? I'm gonna say Alliance two to one. 
It's, it's best of five. It's best of five. Oh, it's best of five. Uh, Alliance has the winner bracket advantage. That's the other one. Alliance, okay, so it'll, yeah, it'll probably be three to one then. I see Quantic yeah. taking one game, but it'll end up being two one in the games if Alliance right. has the winner's uh, advantage. Okay. But I think Quantic takes one game off them, but that's it. All right. Kanaz? Uh, I'm betting Alliance VP finals, and I think VP take it 3 2, running it back from losers' bracket. Wow. So 3 1 on games? Yeah, 3 1 on games. Wow, all right. I'm, I'm going deep here. <laughs> yeah, you are going pretty deep. I what do you, what do you think down. it'll be? Is it the LAN advantage? Is it RSART's going to be huge? Well, what's going to take them over? I think that betting against VP is kind of dangerous. They're, they almost always play beyond, I think, really where people are expecting them towards the end. Mm. Alliance has sort of the same yeah. thing going on, where Alliance, like he was, gave up was saying, they have a really high win rate in tournaments. They don't always win every game, every match in the tournament, but when it comes to the crunch time, they play really well, and I think VP have a little bit of the same thing going on. Uh, I don't know, I just got a feeling. VP, I wa- especially in watching the games against them, against Alliance with them uh, recently in Star Ladder. They played really well, and I don't know, I'm feeling confident. I'm feeling right. confident. Cool. Shiver? Uh, I think Alliance vs. Pro in the finals. Okay. I'm not going as uh, well so well as Knaz, though. I will say... <laughs> well, I will say 3-2, th- to two and then either team. It goes to the full five games, that's what I say. Full five, and it's and okay. it's yeah. You're you're not you're sitting on the fence. You're not going to say that either one's favorite. Like that's okay. You know, because you know. Oh come on. Alliance was the first non-Russian or non-CAS team. Sorry, that took Star Ladder. Previous mm-hmm. season. That's true. And I think they definitely have a good shot to win this as well. But lately, Virtus Pro has been so strong. Uh, and uh, and also, I mean, up against Alliance, like their track record up against Alliance, I believe it's going to be in favor of Virtus Pro for the last two months or so. Yeah. Uh-huh. And mostly I'm hoping to see those two in the finals because it feels like those two have more even games. I mean, we saw the DreamHack finals, Quantic vs. Alliance. Game one was fairly... No, that's not true, actually. None of the games were even. It were stomp one time, stomp for the other team, yeah. stomp for uh-huh. the last Just team. for different teams. Yeah. Yes. And that was not really all that fun, but we know and we have seen Virtus Pro Alliance, those matches that they have together. I mean, it's just a it's just piece of beauty that right there. So three to two. If I have to say team, I actually, like, on one side, I hope it's going to be Virtus Pro just to have uh-huh. also the world show, like, Alliance is not almighty. Sure. But, in fa- like, uh, my favorite team of the two would be Alliance, so I'm a bit torn here. All right, so you, you, you're you on 50-50. I'm 50 All right, well, I guess that leaves me the unpleasant task <laughs> of saying I'm, I'm predicting Alliance over Virtus Pro 3-0 in the grand final. Oh. I, I think I like VP. I, in fact, I love VP. I love watching them. I, I think they have a, have a cool set of players. I was initially skeptical when they made the roster change when they booted Santa and uh, NS added Arsart. But NS actually, I mean, people were really complaining about it a lot on forums, and NS posted what I thought was a pretty convincing defense of his decision on, uh, I think it was probably the VP official website. And from that point on, I was sort of checking it out. I was like, well, I don't know if NS and Arsart are really going to mesh as a support pair. And they have. I, I love I love VP. I think they're a great team, but I don't. I'm not even sure that they can take a, a full game off Alliance. I think I, I think in the winners bracket final they'll take a game, so it'll be two one. But when they meet again in the uh, grand final, if Alliance comes in with a one game advantage, I think they just take two and just head home with the prize, and that'll make them two time champions, two times in a row, and that's the uh-huh. first two time champion since Navi, I yeah. think, of Starlight. Yeah. So that'll be a pretty big deal yeah, too, honestly. Yeah, previous Star Letter was the first one that Navi did not win, right? Well, I say first one, but I mean, like, the first one by was by the retry, but that wasn't really, like, that was Star Series, I believe, or Star Tournament, or Star Championship it was, that was it. Star Championship was won by the retry, yeah. and then came Season 1 of Star Ladder, and then Navi started winning. Yeah. So Navi, Navi has won uh, one until last season. Yeah. Season, so. The first four seasons, you're right, uh, Navi won all of them, and then only in the last one did anybody else take anything, and it was, uh, I mean, right. at, at the time, I think there was still no Tidehunter, they hadn't switched over to Alliance just yet. They had, I think actually, it was like I, the next week. It was, uh, I think it was during the tournament, even. It was, you're right, it was during, it was in the middle of the tournament that they announced Alliance, yeah. but they, they took out, I think, Fnatic in the finals. 
So yeah, I mean, maybe we'll see Alliance as a two-time champion, maybe not. I think we have a good diversity of opinions on the on the yeah. panel here, and I guess with that, I, I heard that the game is actually delayed, yeah. so I don't know that we're going straight into the game. No, like, uh, I think everybody knows that Star Ladder, it is a LAN, so it is live it's in Kiev and all that stuff, and there are multiple games in Star Ladder Star Series. There's also CSGO, which is probably the main thing next to Dota 2. There's some other games, but I don't know idea which which one. But the games today have actually run late a little bit, so we are actually one and a half hour behind schedule. Woo! So the first <laughs> Dota two match is now scheduled or rescheduled to start at five p.m., which is one and a half hour from now, because of course this is the official starting time. So what we're probably gonna yeah. be doing is we're gonna just keep the stream on and then at uh, well, like one hour from now ish. Probably a little bit before then, I will turn on the same pre-broadcast, pre-pre-show that we had a moment ago. Uh, <laughs> sorry for people that are watch gonna watch it double, but hey, uh, I'm thinking at that time there's a lot less people watching uh, Beyond Summit as well, so that will be good. Mm -hmm. And I guess if I am indeed gonna be doing this as a rebroadcast thing, then people will hear me say this in a rebroadcast, and they'll be totally confused. <laughs> 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 But oh well. Just infinitely, yeah, he's constantly <laughs> watching pre shows. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> we don't need to cast, just pre show loop. Yeah. All day. <laughs> it works, it works. But uh, yeah, we have, uh, we have then, like, we have a bit of a break. And we're just going to yeah. be having some music in the brackets on until then. I can actually show the Russian screen uh, where you can still see nin nin Ninjas in Pajamas versus Navi yeah. CSGO. If people want to see that, you let's watch that. You sound very excited for that, yeah. I'm pretty excited. CSGO is a pretty cool game. Um, it's it's a controversial game, of course, because of the whole Counter Strike. People are still mad about Source, and here's a brand new version. But people, I think people mostly are okay with CSGO. There's less of an outroar, the outcry than there was for for Source. I've actually started to appreciate CSGO purely because it's always been before Dota. Well, it's not always been before Dota. The last two seasons <laughs> have been before Dota, and, and I'm just sitting here waiting to cast, and I'll watch, yeah. you know, CSGO in the meantime. So I just I just yeah. can't find myself to to enjoy first person shooter esports. I just can't do Whoa. it. Oh, harsh. I just can't Am do I it. Quake? I, no, I never enjoyed Quake. I, I can. I never got into. I never got into esports until way past. Like, I'm, it was nothing to do with first-person shooters. Could do it. All right. It, I don't know. I I don't really like like I don't really watch Halo or anything. But Quake is great, man. It's so, it's the purest test of like two people's ability to click <laughs> something. Okay. At, at a at a fast rate in a particular spot on the screen. Yeah, there is no bunny, better test of how well has. somebody clicks on a screen. Okay. <laughs> Uh, oh, by the way, for people watching, I know that they like there's not that many people yet, and when I say this in a rude broadcast, there's going to be a zillion, so that's great. But um, <laughs> as you can see below everybody's camera, there's their Twitter tags. So if you have some feedback or questions or something, yeah. tweet. We have to do this. <laughs> like we have to say people to tweet us, and then people will tweet and stuff. <laughs> What I've been doing, I don't know if, you, if you've been seeing, I've been trying to look at people inside the boxes, so I looked up when looking at them. <laughs> yeah. right. This is actually our topographical arrangement at yes. the, the Shiver Studios. Yeah, yes. Shiver Studios. <laughs> yes. I'll, I'll just We're look all... up. It, 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 it worked. Part. Like people were saying, oh my god, Shiver is looking at canals. It worked. <laughs> that was good. <laughs> It's kind of funny. I don't know. How, like it's it's weird because we 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 saw Beyond the Summit. They were a bit yeah. struggling with how to look, and we actually heard uh, Too Good saying something about that in the broadcast where he was in. Like he likes to talk to people where they're sitting, even if you are, uh, you know, not looking at the camera directly. Well, where right. else, else am I gonna look instead of in the, at the camera, right? Right now. Right. Like I no can choice. try to look at the screen next to me, but all I see is a wall, and a jar full of one cents. <laughs> but hey. <laughs> So it's a bit awkward, but it works. Yeah. Yeah, I said, I'm gonna check if I have any Twitters. No. Damn you, people! You're <laughs> disappointing. Anybody else <laughs> tweets? Wow! Wow! Shots fired at the audience. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> That's harsh. Yeah. Shouldn't shots fired at the audience. Well, no Twitter spam. So, so yeah, we are gonna be having a break. I'm gonna be showing you the CS:GO stream. Of Star Ladder, we'll be back, and after the re well, I'm I'm like the stream is not gonna go off or anything. So after the rebroadcast of, 
I have a tweeter. I have a tweet. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> okay. Uh, sure. Yeah, people can. People can they tweet too. to you as well, so they they have it. Nice. If you want to join a guild called Permamutes, and if you don't join them, you're reported. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yes. That's a really good racket. That is really good. That is really good. So we are uh, we are gonna be uh, going off. So thank you for being here. If you have only just tuned in, I do notice that a couple of people have joined since I started it. If you have only just tuning in, I will recap. The game has been delayed by one and a half hour due to uh -huh. uh, the games before Dota 2 running late at the location in Kiev in the Cyber Arena. So we are going to be going back to showing you brackets and music. And well, not showing you music, but you can listen to music. And when we come back, it's actually a replay of this pre-show. And after that, we're going to be back here and we are going to be heading ourselves into the game after introducing the players and all that jazz. So you can stick around. I wasn't going to say that, but it's not really needed as long as you're back here in an hour. <laughs> <laughs> that will be good. Actually, it's, not, it's less than an hour right now, is it? Yes, it is. Awesome. I'm going to make a vote of this pre-show. That's cool. That's right. That's nice, right? Yeah. Yes, I like that yeah. too. So I'm going to do that in half an hour because then I can actually make vods of things. So any last words before we uh, jump ourselves out? No, I'm excited to see some games. Uh, yeah. As soon as we wrap up the CSGO, we're going to get uh, get our IC Cup VP, get our Roost Dodo on. Then it's going to be Roost Dodo -y. I'm, really, so I'm really hoping for some awesome matches because, I mean, if you have four teams, you have to make those games that there are there actually count and be awesome. Definitely. Right. I think we're in for a great slate of games. I can't wait. Yeah, and maybe we'll have uh, Basecap back here because he was casting something still, but I think, like, when we're back, uh, he might be actually here. He'll be done, yeah. 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 Hopefully. So that'll be good. So, uh, so yeah, thank you for being here and uh, over and out and into music and into Russian stream without sound, but you'll see actually CSGO hasn't started yet. So I'll just leave on brackets until CSGO starts. There we go. If I press